Hello and welcome to this first podcast out of four planned podcasts about IDMP or identification of medicinal products. The goal of this session is to provide you with a better understanding of the basics of IDMP. What it is, what the ideas behind are and the potential use cases we see. I will also give you a brief overview of the timelines now in place for the rollout of the first iteration of IDMP at the European Medicines Agency. My name is Anne Pousset and I'm a senior consultant at Epista Life Science, where we work to continuously improve regulatory compliance and where we wish to share the knowledge we have to better support our life science clients to achieve their goals. The ISO IDMP standards were published back in 2012 by the International Standardization Organization, ISO. They're available from the homepage for purchase. They're developed as a response for a demand for harmonized specification for medicinal products, facilitating exchange of data and minimizing the risk during this exchange. As drawn up here in the figure, ISO IDMP is initially five standards fitted together and have, except for the units of measurement standard, each their own implementation standard, explaining in more detail how the standards should be understood and implemented. The standards and their implementation guidelines are periodically updated. A dedicated working group under ISO was working with the development of the IDMP standard family and maintenance of the existing standards. The IDMP standards describe the concept of identifiers, medicinal product terms and their definitions. The standard also describes the product information model with its relationships, all required to allow for establishing the unique identification of medicinal products and associated information. So what are we really talking about here? Let's take a closer look at the figure. The foundation of IDMP is the medicinal product standard. It describes not only the content of a packed medicinal product, from box to drug ingredients, but it also includes the registration details related to the product, like the approval date and registration number. The pharmaceutical product information standard allows for unique identification and exchange of data with starting point in the administrative product. This allows for tracking independently of the medicinal product across pharmaceutical products and across substances. Both standards rely on input from the other standards, the substance standard, the standard on pharmaceutical dose forms, units of the presentation, routes of administration and packaging, and the one on units of measurements to allow for the unique identification. ISO IDMP supports as a starting point the activities of data standardization at medicines regulatory agencies. Data exchange happen continuously between the pharmaceutical industry and medicines agencies. Examples on submitting product data for authorized products using XCVMPD, delivering organizational information to SPOR, or providing information on the assigned QPPV for user vigilance, all for the European Medicines Agency. In the US, certain data standards are in place and used, for instance, with the unique uh, device identification and structured product labeling. Further activities like the PQCMC, CASA, and the newly released data modernization plan will increase the focus on data standards going forward in the US. Even if data sources from WHO, ICH, or as here mentioned, EDQM may be used, there is no global data standardization in place and there will likely always be regional differences in the use, but the IDMP standards at their level are global. I have mentioned a few use cases and data standards. I will now like to dive into the example of the electronic application form or the EAF. It is used by the industry both for initial and life cycle submissions to the EMA and membership countries. The EAF has format of a PDF form with use of free text field and controlled vocabulary, so pick lists. 
Since 2019, it's also integrated with the Organization Management Services OMS database, allowing the person performing the EAF data entry to retrieve the organization information needed from the OMS database. This secures unique identification of an organization and it allows the agency to track and reuse this information in an easy manner. Now, the OMS database is populated both by the agency and the marketing authorization holders. As a marketing authorization holder, you're responsible for adding your own organization to the OMS database. For the agency, this information will be linked to your submissions. You may, as an organization, consider if that same link should be available in your organization, for instance, in your RIM system. This is a small example, but it makes it clear that IDMP should be considered in any data standardization initiative you may have where the regulatory data is in scope. This also includes any regulatory systems you may consider updating or implementing. In February 2021, the European Medicines Agency released their second version of their IDMP implementation guideline named Product Management Services Standards for the Identification of Medicinal Products in Europe. There are more minor versions expected, but a year from this release date, the Product Management Services or the PMS database should be available and voluntary submission may be initiated. For those marketing authorization holders who have or who are planning to have registered products in the European market, it is very relevant to start planning for this requirement now. We will be going more in details on recommendations for planning activities, timing and scope at a later podcast. Thank you for listening in on this IDMP introduction. Here are the takeaways for you to remember. IDMP is made for facilitating exchange of medicinal product data. Your organization may see an advantage in implementing IDMP either to comply with the regulatory requirements or to leverage master data and data governance initiatives. For the marketing authorization holders, there is a coming regulatory requirement in the EU that will require submission of IDMP aligned data. If you wish to further discuss this topic and hear how EPISTA can help you, please reach out. Thank you again for listening in.